Hey everybody, it's Dr. Michelle Bankson with another hope-filled perspective. I've been a little MIA lately. I'm really sorry about that. Um, the holidays hit and then I started treatment and not always feeling my best. But um, I had a meeting away from the house today. And so. I decided that the Lord had been putting a message on my heart recently and it was confirmed yesterday at church and so I wanted to take a few minutes to talk with you about my hope-filled perspective which is that in the midst of battle don't retreat now, what do I mean by that you know scripture says that the thief comes only to steal kill and destroy but the other half of that verse which is John 10 10 is when Jesus says but I have come that they might have life and have it to the full and I've been thinking a lot lately about how the enemy watches us and pays attention to the minutest of details and will just drag us into battle right and so often it happens right when we're in the midst of doing something God has told us to do or right before God's about to do something big and I've been in my own battle recently I know many of you know and have been following my story um, about dealing with this cancer battle and I'm gonna tell you that every once in a while the thought creeps into my head I just I'm done. I, I, I just want to retreat and run. Run away. Uh, run away from all the treatment, run away from all the doctor's appointments, run away from all the expectations. But I started thinking that if we retreat when we're in the midst of battle, basically we give the enemy a foothold and it makes it easier then for the enemy to take us out. So I was thinking about that and praying about that and was asking the Lord, okay, so then what do you really want us to do in the midst of this battle? Because we all have the battles, right? I mean, scripture tells us, don't be surprised by the trials that you are facing, right? He tells us it's going to happen, whether it's a health crisis or it's a financial crisis or it's a relationship difficulty, we're all going to have battles. And as I was thinking about this, I thought, well, how did Jesus face the battles? And scripture tells us before Jesus started his earthly ministry, the Holy Spirit took him out into the wilderness. And there, Jesus faced the enemy, the very same enemy that comes after us and tries to take us into battle. And one of the things that Jesus did was he prayed. He prayed more. He asked the Father, how do I handle this? So one of the things that we need to do when, there, when we are in the midst of battle is rather than retreating and praying less, we need to pray more. There's a scripture that talks about in, in, in the midst of trial, Jesus prayed and it says, all the more fervently. So we need to do more. We need to pray more. And then I thought about it and I thought, well, what else? Lord, what else? And I was reminded that when Jesus was in the wilderness and dealing with the enemy, you know, and Jesus was hungry. I have never gone 40 days and 40 nights without any food, but Jesus did. So by the end of it, he was pretty hungry. He was weak from hunger and the enemy waited and watched until he was good and weak and then he started coming at Jesus and tempting Jesus and Jesus's response was always to come back and say it is written and then quote this applicable scripture and sometimes when we're in the midst of battle it's easy to get out of our routine it's easy to let go of the exercise. It's easy to let go of the healthy eating. It's easy to skip our quiet time. But Jesus demonstrated in the midst of battle 
we need to be in the word even more and we need to be quoting scripture back to the enemy even more. So we need to pray more, we need to read the scripture more, we need to quote the scripture more. And I started praying and asking, okay, Lord, is that it? Is that it? And I sensed that that was not it. I sensed what he was saying was to praise more. When we are in the midst of battle, we need to praise God more. The enemy hates when we praise the Lord, but scripture says God inhabits the praises of his people. So when we start praising, it makes the enemy take a hike because he can't stand it. And we need to be thankful all the more. I don't know about you, but some trials are just harder for me to be thankful during. So I've had to look for things to be thankful for. I might not necessarily be thankful for the diagnosis I was given, but I am thankful for when it was given. It could have been much worse. I am thankful for medical personnel who know how to handle the side effects. I am thankful for all the friends who have been praying for us through it. So in this trial, while I'm not necessarily thankful for the trial itself, he has shown me so many things to be thankful for. And you know, it's hard to get down and depressed when we are thankful. So in the midst of battle, we need to pray more. We need to read the scripture more. We need to quote the scripture more. We need to praise God more. We need to thank God more. We need to forgive more. Yeah, that was one of the things that the Lord showed me is in the midst of battle, it's really easy to look around and blame other people for our situation. It's easy to get bitter and resentful that other people aren't going through trials. But bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness wreaks havoc on our physical well-being and our emotional well-being and our spiritual well-being. So rather than forgive less in the midst of battle, we need to forgive more. So we need to pray more. We need to read the scripture more. We need to quote the scripture more. We need to praise God more. We need to thank God more. We need to forgive more. We need to love more. There is a well-known psychiatrist by the name of Carl Menninger. And many of you have heard me tell this story before, but I think it makes such a valid point. He was delivering a lecture to thousands and thousands of people, and someone raised their hand and asked the question and said, you know, for someone who's on the brink of despair and just thinks there is nothing left to live for, what kind of recommendation would you give them? Well, he was a psychiatrist, right? So everybody thought medicine. But actually, that wasn't his advice. His advice was to go outside, walk around, rock, walk across the railroad tracks and find someone else in need and love on them. Do for them. Because when we do for others, it takes the focus off ourselves and what our own trial is. And I guarantee no matter what we go through, we can always find someone who's got it worse than we do. So we need to pray more read the word more, quote the word more, we need to praise more, thank God more, forgive more, love more. That's our battle plan. But in the midst of the trial, it can be so overwhelming that it can make us just want to give up and retreat. And I've been there. I've been there. But I can tell you I don't stay there. I can tell you I don't stay there because I know where the victory comes from and so I want to align my thoughts and my attitudes and my behavior with those victory strategies that Jesus modeled 
so that the enemy will take a hike rather than me taking a hike. So your hope-filled perspective today is that in the midst of the trial, in the midst of your battles, don't retreat, don't give up, but do more. As always, if you found this encouraging or helpful, feel free to share it because others are needing our hope. And it just might be the kind of hope that someone else needs to see today. Until next time, this is Dr. Michelle Bankson with your hope-filled perspective. I hope to see you again real soon. I know I've been MIA and I'm sorry about that, but I'm going to come out on the other side and you'll see a lot more of these hope-filled perspectives. And if you want them in your inbox, many of my blogs are very much of the same kind of information. So if you are not subscribed to my blog, go to drmichellebankson.com forward slash blog and sign up for the blog and it will come to your mailbox about once or twice a week. But I pray that this was an encouragement to you and I pray that now you will have a hope-filled day. Until next time, see y'all.